At one point in time, Ring of Honor was the top indie wrestling company and later on would become what was probably the third most popular wrestling company entirely outside of TNA and WWE of course. Some of wrestling's top stars made their name in Ring of Honor before making it big. CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins, Adam Page and the Young Bucks, just to name a few. But nowadays, with the rise of other wrestling companies outside of WWE in North America, such as AEW, MLW, NWA, Impact making a comeback, and of course, New Japan making waves in America now, Ring of Honor doesn't find itself as high on the totem pole of wrestling companies as it used to be. Despite major financial backing from the Sinclair Broadcast Group and even having a national TV deal on Destination America in 2015, Ring of Honor is at a low right now and aren't able to compete with the heaps of competition in the pro wrestling world. So what happened? My name is Thomas Opton Wrestling and today we're going to be looking at the rise and fall of Ring of Honor. Before we do get into it though, be sure to subscribe with notifications on. According to my analytics, the majority of the guys watching these videos aren't subscribed. So go ahead and subscribe and help me out as I'm trying to hit 200k. But let's get right into this video, shall we? In April of 2001, the video distribution company RF Video, a wrestling DVD seller and taper, were in trouble. They were in trouble because they needed a new promotion to lead its video sale after their best seller ECW went out of business and its assets were purchased by the WWE. Selling ECW DVDs was a big source of income for RF Video and without them, they'd be losing a lot of money. So Rob Feinstein, the owner of RF Video, then had an idea to start his own promotion to fill the void that ECW left and he would distribute the shows on DVD exclusively through RF Video. This promotion, of course, was called Ring of Honor. The first ever event titled The Era of Honor Begins took place on February 23rd, 2002 and the results were as followed. The Hit Squad defeated the Christopher Street Connection, The Amazing Red defeated Jay Briscoe, Xavier defeated Scoot Andrews, The Bloody Knights defeated Natural Born Sinners, Quiet Storm defeated Amazing Red, Brian XL, Chris Devine, Jose Maximo and Joel Maximo, Prince Nana defeated Talboy, Spanky and Ikaka Loa defeated Michael Shane and Oz, Super Crazy defeated Eddie Guerrero and Loki defeated Christopher Daniels and Brian Danielson. Very, very interesting card that. This event took place in Philadelphia which was the base of ECW. Ring of Honor shows would primarily take place here and in other areas of Northwest America. But due to Ring of Honor gaining a cult following fairly quickly, when they would expand into other states such as Ohio, New Jersey, Connecticut and Maryland. Ring of Honor would then begin a talent sharing agreement with the also recently formed TNA. They had a roster of people such as AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, Brian Danielson, CM Punk, Samoa Joe and more. The Ring of Honor World Championship and tag titles were introduced and things were looking good for Rob Feinstein and Ring of Honor. However, this wouldn't last and very quick into Ring of Honor's life, they'd be caught in their first major controversy. In 2004, Ring of Honor owner Rob Feinstein was caught allegedly trying to solicit sex on the internet from a person whom of which Rob believed to be an underage boy when in reality it was an adult posing as an underage boy. Allegedly, they made plans to meet and hang out at the boy's house. He claims that his sister was partying in New York and his parents were away and gave Feinstein his address in Chicago and when Feinstein arrived at the boy's house, he was welcomed with news cameras and then drove away. Following this, Ring of Honor were in hot water and as a result, while Feinstein was never charged, he resigned from Ring of Honor and RF Video. TNA ended their talent sharing agreement with the company, meaning many talents had to choose between Ring of Honor and TNA, with the likes of AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels leaving Ring of Honor and going to TNA. And in general, Ring of Honor's future was in doubt. It seemed like the company was about to die an even quicker death than ECW. However, like TNA in 2017, they managed to pull through. 
Doug Gentry bought Feinstein's stake in Ring of Honor and then sold it to carry Silkin. And Silkin deserves a lot of credit. If it wasn't for him, the company would have most likely gone under. But he really believed in the product and really believed in the talent. And not only did he stop the company from dying, but he also helped put it on the map further. Within the next year, TNA once again allowed talents to work back for Ring of Honor, meaning AJ and Daniels would come back. But while many talent was gone from Ring of Honor, the talent that stayed with Ring of Honor managed to hold down the fort really well. Samoa Joe and Austin Aries had legendary world title runs, and CM Punk and Samoa Joe had their amazing feud, which saw Ring of Honor get their first ever five-star match from Dave Meltzer when they wrestled to a 60-minute draw for the world title as an event called Joe vs Punk 2. Their feud was so good they had an event named after it. The following years would arguably be their best years. 2005 to 2009 saw the likes of El Generico, Kevin Steen, Tyler Black and more being signed while Brian Danielson and Nigel McGuinness were having crazy world title reigns and Samoa Joe had yet another 5 star match this time with Kenta Kobashi. The likes of Kings of Wrestling, Second City Saints, The Briscoes, Austin Aries and Roderick Strong were holding it down in the tag division. Things were really looking good for Ring of Honor. But as Ring of Honor moved into the new decade of 2010, many wrestlers were leaving. CM Punk left in 2005 to the WWE, AJ Styles left in 2006 to work full time with TNA, Brian Danielson joined WWE in 2009, Daniels left in 2007 to join TNA, and of course, five star match machine Samoa Joe also left Ring of Honor in 2008. But while all these wrestlers left, many great things still happened with the company, including signing their first pay-per-view deal with TVN and the Dish Network, and holding more shows across North America, including Florida, and making their debut in Canada. In January 26, 2009, Ring of Honor announced that they had signed an agreement with HDNet Fights for a weekly television show. After a year of doing this TV show, Ring of Honor announced the TV title on January 26, 2010, with Eddie Edwards becoming the inaugural champion. However, a year later, on April 4, 2011, Ring of Honor would air their final TV show as their contract with HDNet ended. However, just one month later in May, it was announced that Sinclair Broadcast Group had purchased Ring of Honor from Gary Silkin and were now the owners of the company. For those of you who don't know, Sinclair Broadcast Group are a telecommunications company worth nearly $6 billion. This purchase was huge, and with this, a weekly Ring of Honor TV show made its return, with programming that began airing on September 24th, 2011, a one-hour show airing weekly on Sinclair-owned TV channels. The pattern of Ring of Honor stars leaving to WWE would continue though, as Claudio Castagnoli, Chris Hero, and most notably, El Generico and Kevin Steen all left to WWE. However, something Ring of Honor always did well was they were able to replace superstars who left them. In 2014, Ring of Honor started the year by announcing that AJ Styles would be returning to the company after being gone for 7 years, a huge signing for them. On June 22nd that year, Ring of Honor held their first live pay-per-view, Best in the World. The event was accessible in 60% of American homes and was a very well received event. And the next couple of years were huge Ring of Honor. They made action figures, they went to the UK for the first time, they introduced a trios belt, they got a TV deal on Destination America, they created a streaming service similar to the WWE Network and in general were making waves in wrestling with the Bullet Club. The Bullet Club in 2014 to 2018 were huge. They mainly wrestled in New Japan, but Ring of Honor had an alliance with New Japan, which allowed the Bullet Club to appear in both companies, and this was very beneficial to Ring of Honor, because let's face it, we all remember those Bullet Club shirts from that era of wrestling. Everyone was wearing one. In 2014 to 2016, AJ Styles was the leader of the group, but he was signed to WWE and out of Ring of Honor, and this pattern would continue again from 2014 to 2017. AJ Styles, Roderick Strong, Adam Cole, 
Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish all signing to the WWE. But Ring of Honor still had their own stars such as Jay Lethal and the Bullet Club and Cody Rhodes would leave WWE and join Ring of Honor and make waves with the Bullet Club too. In 2018, Ring of Honor and New Japan announced a joint show to take place at Madison Square Garden to take place during WrestleMania weekend in April 2019. The event would sell out very quickly and though this seems like a good thing, it really wasn't for Ring of Honor. Also that year, Cody and the Young Bucks promoted and organized All In, a wrestling event produced in collaboration with Ring of Honor that featured numerous Ring of Honor roster members and drew 11,000 fans. Once again, this was a good thing, but also a bad thing because this was the beginning of when Cody and the Young Bucks minds would start drifting elsewhere away from Ring of Honor. And that's exactly what would happen because in January of 2019, All Elite Wrestling was announced and among the members of the roster were many of Ring of Honor's top talent. Cody, the Young Bucks, Hangman Page, SCU and more. This would be the beginning of a downward spiral for Ring of Honor and that spiral would continue further when the MSG event happened. The Madison Square Garden event came around and as a whole, the event was good, good wrestling, but mainly on the New Japan side of things. While the Ring of Honor matches were good, this event really helped to just encapsulate how much star power Ring of Honor had lost. Matt Taven winning the world title was a big sign of that. And don't get me wrong, Matt Taven is a good wrestler, but it's a big drop off from the likes of CM Punk, Samoa Joe, AJ Styles and all these other former Ring of Honor champions. And also, let's not forget that this show saw the debuts of Enzo Amore and Big Cass, who Ring of Honor debuted as fan run-ins, to the point where nobody knew whether them jumping the barricade was a shoot or not. They literally filmed it as if they were trying to avoid showing them, but apparently it came out that this was planned by Ring of Honor, and Ring of Honor were so clowned on, so roasted and were heavily criticised for wanting to sign Enzo and Cass in 2019 and because of it didn't follow through with the signing, which is probably for the better. More incidents would take place with Ring of Honor that year including Bully Ray bringing a fan backstage and shouting at him for the way he was treating the women's division. Apparently he was shouting and spitting at the women's division, however many people in the crowd said the fan did nothing wrong and he was just playing along with the face heel dynamic and even so Bully Ray bought a fan backstage to shout at him. Let's just deep that for a second. How on earth are you letting a wrestler bring a fan backstage to shout at him? That should never be allowed. In October 2019 Ring of Honor producer Joey Mercury left the company and took to Twitter to tell all. He called out Ring of Honor for many things. He first called them out for having no security during the Bully Ray incident. He called Ring of Honor out for having no head injury protocol and forcing women's champion Kelly Klein to work with a concussion. He called them out for their lack of adequate medical staff and called them out for underpaying and mistreating their women's wrestlers. Kelly Klein would too speak up about these issues on Twitter and supposedly this led to Ring of Honor not wanting to renew her contract and she was out the company. At this point Ring of Honor was getting a really bad rep, their average attendance was 1100 and this sort of brings us to where we are now. Nothing really major in terms of controversy has been coming out about the company the last less than a year but the company is just well dead. Not many people pay attention to it anymore or follow it and it's understandable because the roster isn't that strong and there's already so much wrestling out there, a lot of which is much more appealing to watch than Ring of Honor. Overall, Ring of Honor will never go back to where it once was, the top indie promotion in America, a promotion that many top stars such as CM Punk, Samoa Joe, Daniel Bryan all started out their careers in. It will never be like that again, I just can't ever see that happening. Overall, I think Ring of Honor was good for the wrestling business. It had a good run and had some amazing matches that I'll always look back in fondness. But the fact is, they are not what they used to be and they never will be what they used to be. And right now, they're just another wrestling promotion. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. If you did enjoy, then smack the like button. I know I had this video promised for so long. I don't know why it took so long. I just kept procrastinating the script, which ended up being really easy to write. So I'm so sorry about that. 
But either way, thanks for watching this video, guys. If you did enjoy, smack the like button. Subscribe and notifications on because I'm trying to hit 200k subscribers. I'll see you all soon. Goodbye and keep on rolling.